can the method of loci really eliminate that nagging feeling that you've forgotten something critical in your daily life? Can it help you get ahead in your career, a raise and a promotion? According to Jesse Villalobos, it absolutely can. And today's nine tips for using the most incredible memory technique humanity has ever known starts with this. A data from Star Trek? It's data tattooing a toad? That's a vivid mental image, isn't it? Yet how on earth could it get you ahead in your career? Well, Jesse works in an auto body shop, and when he started, he hit an immediate challenge. I, I had started a job a few years ago, and I wasn't really set up for, for about the first three or four months with the computer, and then with access to, to actual systems that everybody was using for for work. What that meant was Jesse had to remember a ridiculous amount of numbers, orders, parts, and even people's names. He had to manage these memory demands in real time without technology to help him. But this set of daily challenges turned out to be an opportunity that vaulted Jesse to greater heights. Even though I didn't have a computer, I was informed what things were coming in on a level that was pretty close to on par with what the other two people there, my manager and one other person, even though they had full access to the system and, and could just look stuff up. The brilliant thing Jesse did was to take what he learned in the Magnetic Mary Method Masterclass and apply it to his daily work life. Memorizing numbers became an exercise to improve himself, and it turned out to be how he could ensure himself a raise and promotion. I've gotten a promotion from just being reliable, which is whenever people ask me for things, I can actually remember what they need. It's, it's a lot we do so many uh, different repairs on so many different cars that if you can't keep up, it really builds up on you. I've, I've seen that in uh, one of my coworkers. It just doesn't do him very much good to write things down. I feel like it's gotten me the promotion. But the greatest gift, Jesse believes, is the confidence that comes from competence. The skills he's learned go far beyond the auto body repair shop. I know in the back of my mind that I can outperform a lot of people simply just because of the amount of training I've done. Does all this sound complicated? It doesn't have to be, and I'll share more on that later, but according to Jesse, it's actually easier than looking things up or trying to remember them the standard way. There's a lot of things that I could just, especially if they're important, I can hold in my mind if, if I'd like to. The amount of effort it takes to do mnemonics is a lot less uh, comparatively. Well, that's Jesse's story, and it can be yours too regardless of where you work or how you apply the method of loci and memory palace techniques. You won't have to worry about overlooking that important task at work, knowing the answers when your coworkers come to you with questions, or even being able to stand in front of a group of people and speak confidently. And despite how complicated method of loci and memory palace sound, they're only as complicated as you make them. Spoiler alert, you don't have to make them complicated. No one expects you to be Sherlock Holmes, especially not at first. It's as easy as this. A memory palace or mind palace is where you put the knowledge you care about. Your palace could be a studio apartment or even a park. And the term loci method or method of loci really just means we're turning the space around you into something that helps you remember the knowledge you care about. Here's an example. Close your eyes and think of your kitchen. You can envision where the refrigerator is, right? And the place inside the fridge where you keep the milk? It's as simple as that, a location-based mnemonic. And when you understand the power of this memory technique, you can increase your learning speed and retention over a single weekend. These nine tips will help you do just that. Let's start with the most important one. Number one, keep it simple. The loci method is only as complicated as you make it. It's easy to overthink and analyze, of course. It's in our nature, right? Well, as we work with the memory palace technique, we can still scrub it out. And here's some help when you're designing your own palace. Tip number two, use white space. Less is more. While it can be useful to have very condensed memory palaces, and those memory palaces can be filled and overloaded with tons of stations, it can also be very beneficial to see what happens when you have less. Try working in a manner that's spaced out instead of overloaded. You can apply this idea to not only your memory palaces, but what you encode in them. Memorize less, encode less, and see if you're able to have more recall from focusing on fewer pieces of information. The goal is to avoid the Dr. Faust effect. The legend of Faust warns us against a downfall caused by a greed for all knowledge. He was unsatisfied with a mastery of law, logic, science, and theology, and turned to the dark arts, 
where he eventually was damned after he sold his soul to Mephistopheles for more knowledge. Instead of just collecting information and never feeling satiated, why not be satisfied with the big ideas and having an appreciation of the white space? You'll find that your mind will fill in the blanks and you don't need that overload of information. The white space will take care of itself. Let your memory palaces breathe. Another great strategy is tip number three. Use different sized journeys. What do I mean by journey? Once you have grown your practice to where you have built several memory palaces, you'll want to have a way of linking them together, right? This is where the method of loci or journey method comes in. The matter of how big a memory palace should be goes at least as far back as Simonides of Kos, who is thought to have discovered the technique after recalling the names of people after they died in a tragic earthquake. The problem with this story is that it's probably just the stuff of legend, a legend I'll be unpacking soon in a new video devoted to Simonides. So if you're new here, hit thumbs up now and get subscribed so you don't miss our new memory boosting videos. Because as Lynn Kelly shows in the memory code, the method of loci is much, much older than the ancient Greek tradition. And rest assured, learning more about how ancient civilizations use these techniques will improve your results with them. Nonetheless, the notion of space as it appears in the legend of Simonides and in all memory traditions matters. It comes up again in memory texts written by Thomas Aquinas, Giordano Bruno, and Matteo Ricci, people we are covering in our series on the art of memory, which I've linked for you in the description below. So what do these ancient texts say? One suggestion is that you should have five feet between stations when using the method of loci. Others say more. Consider this, however. They lived in a different era. They did not have the compact buildings and roadways that we enjoy now. You can use very big journeys or small ones. The point is to know the purpose of the memory palace. You can have shorter and longer journeys and more complex and simpler journeys. They can all serve you differently, so long as you're clear about what you want them to help you remember better. Our fourth tip is to add complexity as your skills grow. Just because we want to keep things simple doesn't mean we're going to stand still. Although your use of the method of loci should be simple in the beginning, naturally adding complexity as your skills grow is key. Let's say that your first memory palace is a place you know well, your childhood bedroom. As you add complexity, it can grow to include your entire home, your block, the walk to school, the drive to work, churches, cafes, art galleries, and more. But remember, before you expand, you've got to get good with just one memory palace. That means starting with your existing competence. Don't overcomplicate things. Ever heard of the phrase, just because you can doesn't mean you should? That's a great rule of thumb to keep in mind when using this memory method. With practice, you'll see that there are some places where simplicity will always rule and complexity is not desirable. Let's move on. Tip number five, add pegs to your memory palace. Think of your memory palaces as pegs to which you can add pegs or spaces to which you can add pegs. When people first get started with memory techniques, they may see these tools as mutually exclusive instead of elements that can be used in partnership. Yet the peg system works exactly how you would imagine, pegging or linking one thing to another. Building upon what you do know, you connect the new information to it in your mind. Think about how a tree grows. The branches sprout from branches and the leaves collaborate together to create a system of nourishment that flows through the entire tree. The magnetic memory method is like that, but takes things a step further. It helps you create memory systems that are like trees, but also like decentralized rhizomes. Rhizomes are subterranean plant stems that are a lot like the neurons in your brain. They send out roots and shoots from nodes, and they aren't necessarily connected in a top-down formation like trees. So long as the network is healthy, new bulbs can spontaneously emerge, just like the connections your mind will make when you are memorizing in the best possible way. This is how information in your memory leads to places beyond mere knowledge. This is how the magnetic memory method helps you experience aha moments that culminate in wisdom that leads to greater mental mastery, better decision making, and concrete benefits like raises, promotions, and lifelong expertise. Okay, you've got the basics down, so what now? After you've created your memory palaces and the journeys that connect them, move on to tip number six, which is to have both short and long-term projects you're working toward so you can keep your practice fresh. A classic short-term project is to have a daily run-through of memorizing playing cards. Keep a deck handy, maybe beside your coffee pot in the morning or near your reading nook, so you can shuffle and memorize a handful in your downtime. 
Personally, I'm not a memory competitor, and although I have competed with great results, I usually train with just a quarter of a deck to keep it fast and fun. There are a few other patterns I teach in the Magnetic Memory Method Masterclass to keep you sharp. In fact, our card memory course was recently updated with a special session after our student, James Gerwing, won the 2019 Canadian Memory Championship. Don't miss these exclusive training drills and bonus discussion with him about how the Magnetic Mary Method training assisted his win, not to mention helping him score 90% and higher on his Latin exams. One reason cards are such a great memory practice is they help you deal with memorizing information where very similar and exactly the same information repeats, such as words and phrases like the, and, but, and so on. A solid card practice also helps you readily practice reusing memory palaces, which we've covered in our video, The Definitive Guide to Reusing a Memory Palace. Link below, please don't miss it. For a longer term project that you can also work on daily, I suggest learning a new language, studying human anatomy, or memorizing a collection of poems. Toggling between these two to three projects will keep you from becoming bored and burnt out from focusing on a singular goal. In fact, here's another great tip, number seven on our list, that will also help you keep engaged if you crave variety. As you swap between short and long-term projects, explore using indoor and outdoor memory palaces for your memory journeys. As an alternative to viewing your memory tools as simply one large memory palace, what if you thought of it as a collection of smaller memory palaces? For example, a home is a collection of rooms, a room a collection of areas and corners, a park can be seen as a playground area, hiking trail, community pool, or you can skydive and wander your memory palaces like Kevin Richardson does while using recall rehearsal for learning Japanese with mnemonics. Okay, Kevin, not that far outside. <laughs> Be flexible and bring a sense of playfulness to creating your memory palaces. They will be far more beneficial as living and growing entities instead of a static fixed creation. For more on outdoor memory palaces, check out my second discussion with Lynn Kelly on the craft of memory. Check out the link for that powerful interview in the description below, one in which we also talk about indoor and outdoor memory palaces and some quirks related to getting the most out of the method of loci. Now, even though I'm breaking down mastery of the method of loci into nine simple tips, let's call a spade a spade. This practice might not always be easy peasy, and that's a very good thing. Without challenge, we do not grow, and unfortunately, many people get the hang of this technique and let it dwindle because they stick with easy things. If you're serious about the technique, you will be faced with challenges along the way, and you will embrace challenges to stimulate your growth. There's just no getting around the fact that success requires setbacks so that you develop meta levels of knowledge that train you in how to deal with them. And one of the best ways to deal with those challenges is to make sure you gather an outstanding personal library of memory training. And that's why you need tip number eight. Use all of the information you have available to you. Utilize it constantly and consistently. Take everything one sip at a time, by which I mean S. Study the techniques for yourself consistently over time. I, implement what you learn from your study of memory techniques and its tradition. P, practice these techniques with information that improves your life. I'm about to reveal tip number nine, but first take a moment to subscribe, hit thumbs up and ring the bell so you'll get my latest videos designed to use real science to help students of everything from second and third languages to passing the bar after law school remember more, faster and better. Or maybe you just want to remember your aunt's birthday. That's great too, and we'll be here to help when you're part of this growing community of magnetic memorizers. Okay, time for tip number nine, keeping a memory journal. I know, I know, in this day and age, everyone wants you to keep a journal about everything. But here's the truth. If you want to improve your memory, it is crucial to have a place, a record of what you're doing, how you're doing it. And only then are you able to proceed and know where you're going if you know where you've come from. A memory journal also helps you get the method of loci right the first time. You learn to see your memory palaces on the page and strategize them. That saves the mistakes and you will let go of the feeling that you may need to renovate your memory palaces later. And if you're feeling overwhelmed, just start with one of the tips I've shared. You'll see how implementing it improves the ease and speed of which you can create memory palaces and progress through the method of loci. Next thing you know, you'll be like Jesse, who not only got a promotion, but also enjoyed being the one who people came to for answers. Mix and match these principles to maximize your efforts, and you'll see just how effortless the process can be with practice over time. Practice how? 
For that, I suggest you start with Mind Palace training secret number one, why your name for this memory technique matters. Trust me, the words you use really do matter if you're serious about mastering the method of loci and keeping your memory perpetually trained. The rest of this playlist series will keep you educated and inspired too, so get started now so you can keep your memory and entire being 100% magnetic.